All right, everybody, let's get this thing going here. Uh, first off, welcome. My name is Neil DeMajor. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing here at Imagine. Um, this is Imagine Academy Quarantine Session, session number five. This one is all about uh, one, of the, um, uh, one of the most talked about additions to the Plovdiv release for ExoCAD, which is uh, Thimble Design. Uh, I know the guys over at ExoCAD really upped their game in that department for this latest release of 2.4 Plovdiv. So uh, we're going to be talking all about that today uh, with somebody joining us here from ExoCAD America. Uh, but before I introduce that individual, just want to go through a couple of housekeeping things here. Uh, first off, uh, everybody in attendance, if you could keep your mics off and your video off throughout the course of the webinar today, we'd appreciate it. That just allows us to keep the focus on the presenters today. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation today, uh, please absolutely ask them. You can use the little chat function down towards the bottom of your Zoom screen there. Um, send those through either to me privately or to the public chat, and I'll keep an eye on those throughout the presentation and pass them along to our presenter uh, at an opportune moment. So feel free to have those questions sent on through. Uh, we'll also reserve time at the end of the webinar today uh, for uh, questions Q&A. Um, also, um, if you are looking to receive continuing education credit that is available, uh, one CE credit is available for attending the webinar today. Um, if you're looking to have that um, uh, for attending today, you can send me your CE number in the chat field. Uh, you can also email it to me. I'll be providing my email address uh, again in the chat field uh, throughout the presentation today. So again, for CE credit, just uh, chat or email me your CDT number and we can get that going for you. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we do these every uh, Wednesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And we're gonna continue doing that until this whole COVID thing has blown over. So if you're looking for a welcome distraction from all the weirdness that's going on uh, in these times, uh, join us every Wednesday and Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to have you. We have a lot of really great topics uh, lined up for these webinars. So please, by all means, uh, stay with us and join us every Wednesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, so with all that said, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker today. His name is uh, Lucas Cardulo. He's the application support engineer for ExoCAD America uh, and definitely one of the gurus there when it comes to all the all the tips and tricks and best, best methods to use their latest release of Plovdiv. So uh, without any further ado, Lucas, if you could turn on your video and audio, uh, I'll hand it over to you and you can get things going here. All right, thanks, Neil. So yeah, excited to be here to talk about uh, a really, really exciting and awesome workflow in ExoCAD. Um, Thimble bridges have long been kind of a, a daunting and, and challenging restoration to figure out in CAD. So in our latest Plavdiv release, we've integrated the Thimble bridge workflow right into the wizard to make it really easy and reliable to make these kind of uh, bridges. Today we'll take a look at how you set this up in DB uh, for Thimble Bridges and go through the design process uh, both in the wizard and then we'll um, step into expert mode and show you a couple tools in there um, that are really useful for this workflow as well. So this case um, up on the screen, this is set up for a Thimble Bridge. Um, doesn't look that different right off the bat here. So you can see we have some teeth indicated as reduced pontics and then our implant sites are set up as copings. So if I click on uh, tooth number three here, for example, we'll take a closer look at how you tell the software we are doing a symbol bridge. So just standard coping set off as a work type, zirconia as a material. And then over here, where the pink color is design virtual gingiva, we have that set to optional. So that will show up in the wizard mode. And then the most important one down here, design with symbol crown workflow. This we have set to yes. This will tell the software that, yep, we do want that step in the wizard and that will show up as we go through the design process. Up at the top, we also have this set up as implant based screw retained. And we do have a pre-app model scan for this case, but that is optional for this workflow. Same thing set up for the copings. Then we'll click design to launch dental CAD here. Another note in DB, um, this is set up as single unit uh, copings, but you can also click the gray dots to turn on your connectors at this point for splinted restorations. 
Okay, we're gonna start with uh, just our scan data. So four implant sites, you can see our preparation model loading and our pre-op scan. First step that loads in the wizard um, is correct the pre-op scan position. So this one just happened to be scanned in correct placement with this model. But if you're pulling in your pre-op scan separately or, or it wasn't scanned at the same time as the preparation model, we have our manual positioning tools here, as well as automatic option. So as long as you have similar data on both your pre-op scan and your prep model, you can use our automatic alignment tool here to place points on both in a similar areas to get those aligned. So like I mentioned, this one's already set up correctly, so we don't need to realign that. So we'll click next here. Optionally, you can use Smile Creator to do a tooth setup. Hey, Lucas, real quick here, we've got a question. Sure. From the audience. Uh, Dan Shelton is wondering, without Gingiva, are you able to use uh, adapt to Gingiva function? Um, he's not sure if you can with Matera. Is that something you can do here in Plovdiv? Um, you still need to set up, let me jump back to DB here. You still need to set that to design a virtual Gingiva here as well. So in our divine immersion profile step, this step is optional as well. So if, if you want the emergence from the implants to directly follow the tissue, you can do that here as well. Otherwise, when we adapt the virtual gingiva, that will follow the contour of the model as well. So typically for this type of restoration, I'll skip past this step, um, but that's kind of a design preference. Um, and it might depend on the shape of your gingiva and how well that scan came out as well, if you have all that data there. It's tooth number 11. I'm just going to keep clicking until we get past these here. All right, so this is a good step here. So the software has placed our tooth library. So the Thimble workflow, right now this is currently compatible with the ExoCAD generic and the ExoFan libraries. ExoFan is a new uh, tooth library in PLOVDIV. So those are the two that you can use with, um, with this workflow. So right here, I'm just gonna jump right over the chain mode uh, tab. This is an excellent tool uh, for setting up a full arch placement like this. So I can just left click on any tooth on the arch click and drag that and place our whole tooth set up. So you notice when I went to chain mode, um, three elements showed up through our teeth. So we have that light blue bar that goes through the center of all the teeth in the shape of an arch. Then we have a dark blue disc at the posterior of both molars. And then the green dots, one for each tooth here. So to start our, our arch placement here, I'm just gonna go back, left click on these dark blue discs, use that to position And Lucas, while you're doing that, um, some folks here are wondering that new library that you mentioned, are you using that right now or, uh, or not? If so, uh, okay. This library is it. our ExoCAD generic library. Gotcha. Is it possible to switch to the new library? I think folks are excited to see it. Yeah, let's take a look at that here. So we can jump into expert mode and change, uh, change that tooth set up here. Great. You dangled that carrot, now everybody's-, everybody's Yeah. <laughs> Let's see the new stuff, okay. All right, so I just went to expert mode. Let's highlight our teeth. So I just clicked on one tooth, held down the shift key, clicked on the other second molar to highlight everything. Load custom tooth model. And now we can switch our library for that full arch here. So you can kind of see, overview the uh, occlusal anatomy there in that uh, little thumbnail. All right. Change our tooth models and let's jump back to wizard here. So pretty, uh, a little more well-defined, a little more aggressive anatomy there. We'll jump over to chain mode tab again. 
So in this one, since we do have a, a pre-app, I'm just using that as a guide uh, for tooth position. Same thing here, I'll lock in the position of the second molar on the left side of the arch. And then I, I click that green dot just below that blue disc to lock in that position. So now to automatically scale, this is, this is kind of where chain mode really shines is I can come in and click on any other tooth in the arch, pull this down, everything automatically scales and stays in contact. It's a really great tool for, for adjusting a full arch setup here. So that's pretty close. I'll show you one more thing on chain mode here. Let's go over to the single tool here. So this allows us to grab and, and position the tooth without affecting the adjacent teeth next to it. So I can come in, use control to rotate, shift key to scale. So I'm just going through and adjusting our whole arch tooth setup here. Okay, once that looks good, we're gonna click next to continue here. This step, um, since we didn't mark emergence profile lines earlier, our um, abutment bottoms are set at the lowest level right at the surface of the implant. So optionally, you can adjust those here if you want to with these tools. Uh, for this example, we'll leave those at that lowest level here. So now I get to the freeforming step. Let's turn off our pre-op scan. So here, um, if you're familiar with DentalCAD already, we have our um, tabs for freeforming tools. So by default, it comes up to anatomic. We can left click on different parts of the teeth and drag to adjust. This is useful maybe if you want to increase the contact area on certain teeth and make general adjustments to your anatomy and shape and profile. So we can go to free tab, we have add remove tool, smooth tool, two controls for each one. We can have a slider to adjust the strength here and then the second slider to adjust brush size. So add remove to, uh, also is useful for making adjustments, for example, to contact area. Hey, Lucas, uh, real quick here, yep. um, we got a question from somebody in the audience um, wondering if we'll ever see an undo button in the chain mode. Is, is alterations in chain mode something that can be undone easily if needs be? Yeah, good question. I'll check in our request log if that's in there. Um, yeah, currently, yeah, like you guys noticed, that tool is not in there. Um, I can't give a specific date if that is in there, but I can certainly check for you guys. There you go. So your request has been noted and yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be in the next I doubt that's the fir <laughs> first time that's been asked. Yeah. So we'll take note here. All right. So also at this step, I'm gonna jump over to adapt tab. You can see a lot of our um, library teeth are protruding through the scan. So I'm just going to trim those real quick here. The distance that you trim these to, is, it's not super critical at, at this point um, because we'll be adjusting that um, space of the um, thimble bridge to the tissue at a later step. So. So here we can adjust the adjacent teeth as well. So for single crown restoration, single units, we're gonna cut intersections. Click next. So another optional step here, if you do a little pre-op scan, you can use that to adapt your library teeth too, if you want to more closely um, 
uh, mirror your pre-op anatomy, you can do that here as well. This step, this is where we need to set up an insertion path for the model. So just right clicking and dragging, rotating the model so that we're looking straight on at the insertion path we wanna set this to. Another thing to point out, our undercuts are indicated in that uh, kind of brownish and maroon color here. So once we have that in the position here, a couple options under the properties tab here before I click apply. So we can adjust the offset value. This is essentially the distance between the surface scan and the underside of the bridge surface that will be generating later. The smoothing setting, this tells the software how closely to replicate the shape of the, of the scan. So the higher we bump that percentage to, the flatter and less detail it's gonna contain on the underside of the bridge there. And then of course, uh, for milled restorations, we can specify our tool diameter here. And then, so let's click set insertion direction from view. That'll lock in our current view. We can see those arrows moved a little bit there. And we can see our deviation from the original insertion path, which are the small blue arrows. And then we click apply to generate that offset surface. Did that work? So what it's doing here is just taking into account our bottom properties and undercut settings and just calculating um, a whole complete new surface here that we'll, the software will use to form the underside of, of the bridge. Takes a few seconds to calculate on my laptop here. Almost finished. All right, there we go. So that blue surface is the new offset surface. Then we, here we can go to your freeforming tab. So if there's any other critical areas that you want to add or adjust the uh, block out wax to, you can do that here. Freeforming tools, add, remove, and smooth and flatten. So anywhere on this surface, we can adjust the block out wax. Let's click next. So this message that comes up, this is asking, do we want a single uh, virtual gingiva for all the teeth or segmented out into, into sections here. So we're gonna click the top option because we want this all as a continuous gingiva. So now it's showing our tooth setup over the offset surface. Main goal here is we need to left click and place points and define the area of, of contact of the bridge with the tissue surface here. So a couple settings over here, there's two thickness settings. We can specify a, a minimum thickness of the material at the base and then also as it gets up to the cervical areas of the teeth. And then smoothing, um, this tells the software how closely to follow the shape of the scan and the teeth. So if I have that slider more to the left, um, you'll see once we calculate the virtual gingiva, it's going to really follow the, the contours of the teeth and go in and approximately. If I bump that more to the right, it's going to be more of a smooth, flat surface and not really follow the contours of the teeth. So let's hit apply and see what that looks like. Actually, let's place, uh, place our points first here. So like I said, this is defining the area that we want to um, contact the tissue. Then we can, this is adjustable later in a freeform step. So if we don't get this 100% accurate, we can adjust that after the gingiva gets calculated here as well. All right, and double click to end. As Soon as I double click and connect our points here, the software starts calculating based on our settings here.
All right, there we go. So we can see the points that we placed for the border in the pink color as our virtual gingiva. So that smoothing setting, since I had that kind of close to the left, we can see that closely follows the contours of the teeth. I won't uh, recalculate it, but if I bump that slider to the right, it'd be more of a flat, smooth surface. So that's kind of a, a design preference on how kind of accentuated and, and aggressive you want that tissue shape to be. So that lets you kind of customize that there as well. So if I did want to sh make some changes here, I can just go and left click, change a point, hit apply to recalculate, and that'll recalculate with a different shape here. That looks pretty good. I think we'll continue with that shape here. So I'll click next. All right, so what's going on on this screen? So we can, I'm gonna turn off our pre-op scan. We don't need that uh, shadow on there. So here we have the gingiva shape. Right now it hasn't been adapted to the tissue surface yet. So that's why it's protruding through quite a bit here. So this step is called freeform gingiva in the wizard. And we're on the anatomic step here. So what that allows us to do, I can go in, left click anywhere on this yellow surface and adjust that. So if we want to bring up our interproximal tissue height here, we can do that. And this is also useful if you want to change how much of the tooth is exposed here. You can adjust those areas as well. So here we can really kind of customize and, and, and fine tune the anatomic shape of our, our gingiva here. So that's the anatomic tools. Um, we can jump over to the free tab. As we've seen before, we have add remove and a smoothing tool here. So we can go in and adjust the surface here. Another useful tool here, this checkbox that says keep uh, bottom and boundary fixed. This is useful. Um, like I mentioned before, where you place the borderline of that, if you want to change that, maybe you want to bring it down a little further or move it up, I can uncheck that box. Then with add and remove, now we can adjust that material freely and bring it either up or down the tissue, effectively changing where we placed that margin line before. So sometimes back at that step where we mark the points, it's hard to tell exactly where we want that. So that allows you to kind of customize that here as well. If at this modeling stage, you determine we want to change that. Okay. So we'll say our free forming looks good here. Let's click next. So here, uh, shrinking steps. So since we told the software we're doing um, Thimble Crown workflow, it defaults to our Thimble library. The other settings for shrink are, are turned off um, when we have that library selected here. So you can see um, underneath our anatomic shapes what the thimbles look like for each tooth. One common question we get is um, how do we change the angulation uh, of these? Or say for example, we're, we're maybe doing a posterior bridge or if this is all uh, one unit bridge to check if those are parallel. It's, it's kind of visual, um, but at this point, if you notice you once the rotation is really kind of out of whack and you want to adjust that here, that would be an expert mode tool. So I'll show you that real quick here. 
I'll click expert mode, unselect our teeth. It's gonna right click on the one that we wanna change rotation on and go to correct placement. So the, the thimble libraries that we saw before, the position of those is directly related to the, the position and rotation of, of the tooth here. So by changing this, if I come in and change our rotation here, just hold the control key, that will change the rotation of the thimble library that we saw before. So you can just make, continue to make changes to any of the teeth you want to adjust. Click OK. And it's got to be careful if you happen to make a, the tooth by rotating and if you make it overlap an adjacent tooth a little bit, you might have to go in and go back to free form and trim your contacts again. Then we can jump back to wizard mode here to get back to where we were. So let me turn off the uh, gingiva and I can see that even better here. So you can see the uh, bases of the symbol library, they directly mimic the uh, full anatomic library that we're using. So we can always adjust the angulation a little bit with freeform tools later on as well, but this is another way of doing it where you can just rotate your library tooth. So we'll turn our gingiva back on. We'll click apply to use that library here. And then next. So now we have a, a, another freeforming step. Uh, this time we're using freeform tools on the thimble library itself here. So at this point, you might notice that there is uh, gingiva covering up some of the margin areas on the thimble uh, reductions. So there is a step a little further down um, where the software will, we can tell it to automatically remove those areas so we're not uh, blocking insertion path or keeping a crown from seating on there or covering up the margins. So at this point, same freeforming tools, we can adjust our prep shapes here. We might want to come over to the freeform tab and maybe do a little bit of smoothing on these preps to, if edges are a little too sharp. Hey Lucas, real quick question here from the audience. Yep, sure. Wondering what is the default shrinkage value on these uh, on the thimble? Um, let's turn the anatomy on. It's all set up as a, as a preset shape uh, based on on um, the particular library. So we can kind of grab a measurement here. So on size of ledge uh, number 10, for example, we have a little over two and a half millimeters of reduction. And facial, we're about 1.7. Great. And is that is that library, uh, does each uh, tooth library have its own associated thimble library? Uh, for two libraries, yep, the ExoCAD generic and the ExoFan libraries. Those are the ones currently with thimble libraries. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, another attendee here is wondering, how do we get rid of the virtual gingiva covering the margins of thimble? I think you might have touched on that real quick. but maybe Yeah, we'll so there's, there's a cool feature coming up um, where we can after we get the crown shapes on there, we, there's a button that'll actually take care of that and trim all those. So yeah, I'll show you guys that in a little bit here. Great, thank you. All right, so freeforming step. Let's turn off our anatomic shapes for a second here. Just to show you an example of how you can change um, sidewall on these a little bit if you need to make something parallel. So let's use a smoothing tool. Let's kind of grab right on the edge here. Then we can make that sidewall a little bit more tapered here. So especially if you're doing a bridge work on these, you can go through and obviously undercuts will be blocked out a, later, a little bit later on, but if you want to adjust any of those here, you can do that uh, pretty easily with the freeform tools. So let's say those look good, we'll click next here. Oh uh, yeah, adapting. Okay, so some of our tooth models are protruding through, so I'll click Adapt to Gingiva.
All right, now I'll go next. So at this step, um, this is where you can kind of make the decision if you're doing the design of the thimble bridge and crowns or copings all in one shot, or you want to split that up into two sessions. So two different workflows. We're going to continue on and design the copings here. I have another case um, we'll pull up at the end just to show you what that would look like. So that would be continue without thimble superstructure would be if, if this is kind of your stopping point here and you want to manufacture this and then rescan it and, and pull that scan into design your crowns or copings at a later time. Um, that's how you just split it up into two design sessions. So for this first case, we'll leave that design thimble superstructure now and we'll click next. So here we have it um, selecting a margin on tooth prep two. You can just like standard um, crown and bridge module, you can adjust your uh, margins here. We'll click next. So it's going to go through and just automatically select the margin for each one. So I'm not clicking anything here. It's just cycling through and auto selecting each margin. All right, now you can see our cement space color on each tooth prep here. So you can go through, adjust cement gaps. You can adjust your distance from the margin as needed or add additional spacing, depending on your manufacturing or material properties here. And border tab, you can adjust your margin thickness. Common adjustment here, that first number one horizontal distance. Depending on the material, you can adjust your margin thickness as well as undercut settings here. So I'll click apply or click next to apply our default settings here. Now we can see that red surface, we have our minimum thickness setting being applied to each one for each coping. So right now it's just calculating an offset shell. So we have our anatomy library from the previous design step loaded here. Again, with a free forming step. So anything we didn't adjust before on the on these library teeth, we can come back and, and adjust that as well. So this would be a chance to go in and really finalize your anatomy design. Of course, if you're doing full contour, you'd probably have an opposing scan we can check the bite with. Yeah, we'll cut intersections for contacts. And once we have our tooth set up in anatomy and everything looking good here with freeform tools, we'll click next. So now we get to another freeform gingiva step. So th this allows you, this is kind of a final check on freeforming your virtual gingiva shape. This is where that really useful tool here, adapt to thimble crowns. What that's going to do, any material that's protruding into our crown shape and over the margins, you can see we have quite a few areas here. The software is going to analyze those areas and kind of adapt our gingiva shape to, to fit around those. So after you do any, any other modifications to the gingiva here, we can go in and click adapt to thimble crowns. And it's just going to go through and <clears throat> just trim away any of that material that's sticking over the margins. 
We'll probably see it do some adjustments interproximally as well. So any of the, um, turn our anatomic shapes on. So anywhere where our teeth are overlapping that gingiva shape, it'll trim away as well. So a really useful step here, just to make sure our crowns will seat properly on the uh, thimble preps and not be impeded by the, by the gingiva shape at all. And Lucas, a quick question here. Sure. The adapt to thimble function, is it available in uh, version 2.2 or is that, is that exclusively in 2.4 Plovdiv? Uh, that I will have to check. That could be exclusive on Plovdiv, but I'm not 100% sure. I can follow up afterwards with, with those, some answers for you guys for those questions that we don't answer. Thank you. Okay. All right, so that calculation is finished. Let's turn off our anatomic shape so we can see a little bit better. So we can see where some sharp edges are and approximately on the tissue, that's where some adaptation has occurred. And we can see a slight amount of, of ditching and, and the margins exposed on all those thimble preps here. So that should allow our, our uh, copings and crowns um, that we designed on there to see freely or that. So that looks good here. We're going to click next. Now we're at another shrinking step. So even though we selected uh, copings on, and back in DB, uh, a trick here, if we decide we want to keep that full anatomic shape, so I can just set our shrink depth to zero. The software will not reduce those and keep the full anatomic shape of the library. Otherwise we can set a shrink value. So this is the distance that the software is reducing from the full anatomic shape down to our coping shape. And then again, ex, um, exclude selected parts if we want to specify um, something like a metal or zirconia lingual on these, we can do that there as well. So let's go ahead and apply the shrink value here. Software is going to go through, calculate our copings for each tooth here. All right, once that calculation's finished, we can click next. So now we have the free forming step uh, yet again. So now we can adjust our uh, coping shapes. A lot of times here, especially for porcelain application, I'll come in and, and blend these ridges a little bit here, soften some of those sharp edges. So it's just our smoothing tool, about halfway over on strength. And while you're doing that, I can just hop in here real quick. And sure. Dave uh, commented on the chat feed that I indeed uh, the adaptive thimble is a new feature available in 2.4 Plob Dev. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Anybody else joining us since the beginning, you can feel free to send any questions through the chat feed. We'll be keeping an eye on that. And I'll be sure to feed them on through to Lucas as we continue on through this here. And likewise, if you're looking for CE credit for attending today, uh, just send me either privately or on the on the on the public chat line here uh, your CDT number. We can be sure to get you the CE credits for the for attending the course today. All right, so back to our design here. So any any modifications you want to make on support here for coping? Or that's what we're doing here in the, this free form step. Once our coping shapes look good, we can click next to continue here. A question here, Lucas, uh, does yep. this version of ExoCAD play nice with AMD uh, hardware? 
Uh, yep, yep. AMD compatibility is built into the Plavdiv release. Um, as yeah, so some of you guys might remember, in Matera, there was a separate release for the Ryzen processors, but that fix is built into Plavdiv. Beautiful. Thank you. Yep. So here, this this saving step, this is quite lengthy here, so I won't sit and, and make you guys wait through that. So what's happening here, the software is merging our, our shapes, saving a uh, STL file for each one of our coping shapes and the substructure here. So I think I have one pre-calculated here. Let's take a look at the what our end result file will be here. Yeah, so in, in your project directory, you'll end up with a file called merge symbol brid underscore CAD, and that will be your STL file for the bridge. So let's pull that up and take a look at that real quick here. Finished file, so you can see our screw access holes, tissue adapted to the uh, surface scan and nicely shaped thimble preps for each tooth here. So like I mentioned at the beginning, that's the workflow if you wanna go through, design your thimble bridge and copings or crowns at the same time. Let me pull up a case as if we, uh, I think it's that top one there. So this would be as if we manufactured thimble bridge, finished it down, and then rescanned it. So here, I just set up the order form for anatomic crowns. There's just a basic full contour crown. Then we're going to scan the thimble bridge on the working model um, as our preparation scan. And I'll click design and we can see what that looks like here. Still saving on our other case here. And actually, we have some feedback from uh, one of your team members here, uh, Lucas. Yeah. Uh, looks like the option called reset will perform some undo at the chain mode. Is that something you're familiar with? Oh, uh, okay. So that, yeah, that probably resets to the initial position of the teeth, I'm guessing. There you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. Maybe a workaround. So depending on how, how far you are into your, your work and if you want to go back <laughs> all the way. Fair enough. Uh, one other question we have here on the design that you just merged, uh, was there an option to cut back the gingiva as well? Yeah, so that's in expert mode as well. So um, I can't show it while it's calculating, but yeah, if you go into expert mode, right click on the gingiva to bring up that context menu, there is an option there to do a cutback on the gingiva. So yes, that is possible. Um, okay, so here I was going to have a scene file with uh, margins marked already here. So I'm going to load that scene file. So the only part that we're, we're skipping past here, so we loaded a scan of a thimble bridge and then the margins have been marked for each one. So then we're leaving off at the step where we set up a cement space for each one at the crown bottom step. That's the part that we're currently loading at here. So we can see um, the software is pulled in insertion direction based on the library position before. So. Something kind of common here, if we want to go in and change that insertion path. So if you notice one like this is a little off, I can right click on that tooth prep, go down to set insertion direction. Then I'll pull up this view or I can go in, rotate our model. So right now we're just focused on that tooth prep here for tooth number five. Rotate the model how we want that insertion direction. Come over and click on set current view as insertion axis. And then okay. And then we get back to our wizard step. So you can see that green arrow is now more in line with the other insertion directions here. So otherwise here, you're setting our cement gaps for all of our crowns. Like I mentioned before, you can adjust your border settings and undercut here as well. 
Let's click next. Our library crown shapes are placed, even though at this point we're at in single crowns and um, scanned preps, we can still use chain mode if we want to, uh, to set up this tooth arch. So right when I clicked on uh, chain mode, you can see everything came into contact here. Same thing as before, I can move the whole arch if we need to. I just wanna keep in mind you of where your uh, margins and prep shapes are. So I can come over to single, adjust library tooth rotation. Then we can adjust scaling using the shift key shortcut here for scaling. Control for rotate. All right, let's rotate our centrals a little bit here. Okay, tooth setup looks pretty decent here. So we can click next. So here the software is adapting our library teeth shapes to the margins and calculating our anatomic shapes. So then we come up to your free forming step. Like we did before here, you can adjust contacts, any part of the anatomy um, with our anatomic or free form tools. We'll go to adapt. We'll cut intersections for our contacts. We have that currently set at zero. And again, if we had an opposing, we could trim to the opposing scan here as well. So now we're at the last step. So software is gonna save individual SCL files for all those crowns. And those are all adapted to fit on top of that scanned thimble bridge. All right, so that brings us to the end of the material to, uh, to present to you guys. So a lot in there, but as you can see, um, with the addition of that workflow option in DB and a lot of the wizard steps, it really makes this workflow pretty easy and, and kind of predictable and, and reliable. So hopefully that was some good information from everybody. Um, any other questions, Neil, or anything else you want to follow up with? No, that was great, Lucas. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we'll open up the floor here to questions.